So I'm Laure Simon, I'm a French mathematician uh, working uh, in the field of partial differential equations and maybe most importantly at the interface with physics. And actually in preparation of the ICM I have been asked to uh, present my research and also um, how I conduct this research. So one thing which is really important for me is that actually mathematics is a very um, a collective and, and long time story. And so for me, it was important that this presentation can be more like a discussion. And I'm very grateful that uh, Nathalie Ayi has accepted to uh, play this game uh, with me. So um, actually, it's not a random choice because uh, Nathalie is uh, one of my uh, former PhD students. And uh, she's actually um, now she is a professor in Paris. But I think she is um, very uh, aware of um, both my uh, research field and also um, what I'm dreaming of, of the mathematical community and this way of working, actually. And so I'm very happy that uh, we can try to figure out together uh, what, what is important in this uh, field. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, so thanks for involving me. Uh, it's an honor uh, to be part of such uh, an initiative. And uh, I think uh, it's important for our young generations. Uh, so um, let's start this conversation with uh, something that I find interesting about you. Uh, and you were mentioning uh, it's your particular vision about what does it mean to be part of a scientific community. Could you elaborate on this aspect and uh, more precisely to start? What is your approach to research? So what I like in this job is actually that it's a, um, a very um, uh, collective work. And so personally, I like very much working with other people and, and just, uh, you know, confronting dif dif different point of view. But I think that even though there are also people we, who are working alone, I think that, that they, they, they built upon things that have been already proved or disproved in the past. And so it's not there, there, they, they don't start from scratch. I think it's really important to remember that, that somehow this is a very, uh, big construction, which is, uh, elaborated in this, this very long, uh, story. So it's, and, and for me, it's really something which is, which is important to remember. And, and maybe right now we have a system which is a bit like a star system. And I find it's, it's not really fair. Okay, I see, I, I see what you mean. And um, what, um, what for you is behind the title researcher? I think it's a very good question and probably there is not just one definition of a researcher. It depends, of course, on, on the field. I think mathematics is a very specific field. But uh, especially because there is no experiment, for instance, so compared to other sciences, it's, it's uh, of course, uh, different. But for me, what, what is really important, and probably it's not what people in the, in the public can, can have as an idea of a researcher, is that uh, you have people who are creative and curious. I think it's really uh, uh, what I would consider as the first quality of a researcher is to be creative. So in, in this respect, I think it's, even though, of course, you need a lot of rigor, in, especially in mathematics, because, because say, the, the, the earth of mathematics is to, to provide a consistent theory where everything is rigorous. But even though rigor is really important, I think that mathematics somehow can, can be compared to art, because I think there is really this importance of creativity. All right. So uh, creativity, yeah, I think uh, it's uh, one of the quality uh, which is required to, to do research. Uh, for me, uh, I think uh, the things that I've learned during this job is that you have to be patient and tenacious when tackling some problems. So now the pa uh, another aspect is how you uh, uh, see yourself uh, in the mathematical community. You said something about it. Could you precise a little bit what you meant uh, before? Yes, so um, what is important for me is is not 
say only my own contribution. Of course, I'm happy if I can contribute and and say understand deep things and this kind of things. But it's really for me, it's it's really a, um, a work that that personally I envision with with other people, and this is one of of the things I, I like very much in this job is that that uh, first of all you have the freedom to to choose uh, your subject you have the freedom to to choose your collaborators and this is something that say working with other people is really something for me which which is very fruitful actually as you know somehow mathematics is 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 kind of game but uh, playing with abstract concepts so. It's a bit strange because somehow different people will have different representation of the same object. But I think it's uh, both uh, a bit uh, crazy and and very uh, uh, rich because just confronting this this different uh, views on the same object is actually is actually uh, um, very helpful to go uh, deeper in a subject because you are. You have all this, 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 um, all this, this views on the same object because you are, you have somehow, you are obliged to understand how your collaborator is, in, is just as the representation of this object and, and how we can conduct uh, reasoning and all these things. So somehow you are obliged to, to be, say, to be a bit uh, shifted in your own uh, reasoning, and I think it's it's really something which is amazing. Um, so for me, it's really part of the job. Actually, it's not, you know, um, fighting with this abstract concept, but also trying together to figure out um, how deep these concepts are and how you can somehow build some bridges between different fields. For me, this is really. Uh, all the points in mathematical research. Okay. Talking about the, the qualities to, to be a, a researcher, another one I think is you have to, to, to have some communication skills. Uh, I think it's also important. It's uh, an aspect which is a lot present uh, in our job. And uh, actually, since I've known you, I, I've noticed that you're a lot involved in uh, outreach actions towards uh, the general public, the, the young generations. Why is it important to you? So the first reason is that, as I mentioned, one, say, beyond cur creativity, another very important quality is curiosity. And I think curiosity is, is something that should really arouse. It's, it's not, it's, of course, young kids, they are curious of a lot of things, but being curious about science, about understanding how the, the world surrounding us is working, how, I think it's something that, that, that you should learn somehow. So I think it's really important that, uh, say, even for very uh, young kids, we can have this, this, uh, they can have this, this idea that research is not, first of all, it's not uh, only for a very uh, few number of people if, if they are interested in this, uh, in the field of science, of course, they, they, they can participate this collective effort. But also they, they, they have to, to learn that somehow science is not something that you, um, which is, um, past, uh, uh, past story. It's, it's really something which is still moving and, and there are still a lot of questions that that have no answer, and and so that's really um, something where you sh should be active. Science is not just a lesson that, that that you have to learn; it's really something that you have to discover also by yourself. And so I think that this this is really important. And I, I think if we want to have a scientist in the in, in the future, then we have to of course um, uh, convince uh, kids and and also uh, uh, maybe uh, young people or students that uh, it can be uh, not only interesting but but really something which which is great. Yeah, for me it's it's really important and it's also important to communicate towards the public which which 
probably will not be a scientist because, of course, uh, most of the people will not be scientists, but still science is present everywhere in, uh, in our society. And I think it's important to understand a bit, just to be uh, able to, to vote and to participate in different uh, debates and, and around, I don't know, technologies and, and biology and all these kind of things, which are important just to be... Uh, I don't know, to, to live in our society. Yeah, just <laughs> to be a good citizen. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. And I, I think also um, when, we, uh, when we are in front of the uh, general public or young people, uh, we, we, um, we benefit from uh, their refreshing perspective on some of the things we, we, talk, uh, we talk about in front of them because uh, sometimes uh, they don't uh, approach Uh, the things the same way we do. You were talking about that for uh, colleagues, but it's uh, a little bit different again, uh, a little bit different for uh, 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 an audience which is not into science uh, at all. So I think it's it's interesting. So still about communication, could you also tell us um, how do you see communication within the mathematical community? Because I think this is one of the things which is important for you. Yes, so there are different levels of communication inside the community. One is teaching, of course, I think. So the community is, is made of researchers, but also of PhD students, postdocs, and, and even grad students. So, so of course, there is this, this, uh, this, uh, somehow communication just to help them learning things and, and, not just learning, you know, a specific course, but also learning to be open-minded and to try to do all this connection between the different fields. So just to have a very global uh, overview of uh, a subject. And there is also this, of course, now uh, even the, the field of mathematics is very broad and so we cannot really um, uh, learn everything. But I think it's still important that, that we... Um, still have a bit of ideas of what people are doing in other branches of mathematics. And so I think this communication is really important. I'm, I'm, I'm not sure that everybody is really convinced that it's uh, important. Uh, in some fields, uh, people are not really uh, keen to, to try to communicate what they are doing. But I think it's a bit uh, like a pity because, because I think that somehow The, the strength of mathematics is that, that, uh, with this abstract setting, you are able to, um, to, to catch a lot of, say, things which are really universal. And so I think that it's really important that at some point we can also understand what people in a different field are doing because maybe the same kind of reasoning and this, or, Maybe there are simple ideas which can be uh, translated into your field or into, you know, th this kind of s connection may be surprising, but, but they can be very fruitful. So I think it's really important that we keep as fair f as, as far as possible, really open-minded and, and, and really, um, uh, aware of, of course, not of all the technical details and not of even, even, you know, the terminology. So, Maybe yeah, we should say, because I, I don't know uh, who will look at this video, but, but uh, uh, mathematics, so I, I'm not able to understand most of the mathematics that uh, uh, are done today, but still, I think that discussion with colleagues in other fields are really uh, enriching for, for everybody. So I think all these colloquia style exp uh, lectures are really important. Yeah, because uh, you were, uh, I remember uh, when we were discussing uh, Uh, before you were saying that uh, sometimes uh, you can uh, take a, a, an idea which was uh, um, designed for a completely different, uh, which has nothing to do with your problem, and actually you see the idea and say, "Oh my God, I can I can actually use that for my for my thing." So this is basically what you what you said. But this is very uh, this is very striking uh, actually when you when you think about it. So. Yeah, I, I agree with you. It's, you definitely have to still be aware about everything uh, happening in the different field, even if you, can, you can't know everything. But uh, you have to try, and we have to try to communicate uh, um, a, f a f um, far, 
let's say, not just to the people exactly in our field, but we have and to. And I think it's also decide. a very good exercise for you doing this, this yeah. uh, trying to communicate for a broad audience because yeah. then you have to do this effort to to try to, to find what is really essential in the work, what, what are the, the arguments which are simple enough so that you can explain and so that people can understand how things are just, that's, that's just like a big puzzle. And so you, you need to understand how the different pieces with, with, will gather together. So I, I think it's really uh, both interesting for people who will listen to the lecture and also for people who try to explain say to a non-specialist audience I, th I think it's really uh, this this is really um, uh, a way to go further together yeah 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 it's a win-win <laughs> <Exactly. laughs> okay so let's uh, keep uh, digging this point and and uh, talk about science uh, so could you tell us what is your field of uh, research Oh, I can try at least, <laughs> and it's a good uh, exercise, I, as I told you. <laughs> so, um, actually, as I mentioned in the introduction, my my field of interest is partial differential equations, which maybe uh, is not very um, um, meaningful for uh, for um, everybody. But so, what is important and what is uh, very important motivation actually for me is that it's at the inter interface with physics. And maybe I will not give you an exhaustive list of what I, the problems I, I have thought about, but actually I'm, I'm, I will probably uh, talk about two of them just to, to see that there is kind of variety of different problems. So the first one is, is kind of philosophical question and, uh, which is related actually to the sixth problem by Hilbert. Uh, which has been asked so by Ebert at the beginning of the 20th century and the occasion of the um, uh, ICM in Paris. And so this sixth problem is about the axiomatization of physics. So you can say about, but then it's just physics and not mathematics. But so the problem is rather easy to explain. So for instance, you, you see that in this room there, there is air. So air is a gas. It's constituted of, we know now that it's constituted of very small particles, which are atoms, or maybe now we also know that we should uh, probably go to the quantum description, but say, let's say that it's a system of atoms. So this, this is a very uh, first description of this, this air. And then you can try to understand all the forces, uh, which are exerted between this, this atoms. And, and then you can write equations for this, uh, very big system of particles, just following Newton's mechanics. Okay. So that's, a first way to describe the air, of course, this, this is, say, essentially you cannot do anything with this model because it's very complex. The number of particles is so high that even with a very, uh, supercomputer, then you cannot just say anything about the qualitative behavior of this, this gas. And so there are other models which are somehow, um, uh, more practical. For instance, uh, fluid mechanics on this, this kind of things. And so there is a question which is, okay, but do you really describe the same thing just using this atomic description or uh, using the fluid model? So you say that's a very um, kind of philosophical question because you can say that you don't care. Okay, just use this fluid model and, and apparently it's good description, so you can be happy with this. But you see that there is this, this, this problem of consistency somehow of the theory. And I find it very exciting because, because actually when you think about this problem at the mathematical level, you see a lot of connection with a lot of branches of mathematics, probability, combinatorics, even a bit of, so number theory, say dynamical system. So it's really kind of, of, of course, it's the question comes from physics, but you see that actually it will, it will really, um, uh, be a very transverse problem. And also the other thing is that, say, just looking at this problem. So finally, the question is, is it possible to just discard a lot of information on the microscopic scale? Of course, you don't care about the position and the velocity of one particular atom. You don't care. It's not really important. So you are just interested in statistical uh, quantity such as the average velocity of, so just to, to, to say whether the air will just uh, go out or go in. 
and uh, uh, that's that's what you are interested in in the end. And so th the problem you see here at the mathematical level is to understand whether this all these details of of the system are really important at this average level. Okay, and so this is what is said. This is one typical problem of say multi-scale expansion because you have small scales and you don't really care about the small scales, but still they are important. They have a global effect on macro scales, and you are just interested in the end to filter this this macroscopic motion. So I think that that's really a, a, a very large um, a very large uh, category of of question and problems. And so this one may seem a bit uh, a bit philosophical or maybe a bit theoretical and maybe it's not so important but but so that's the second problem that I would like to mention you see that with the same kind of techniques uh, you can be interested in separating the different scales in uh, for instance in oceanic flows so that's one topic that uh, I like very much because I can really interact with with physicists both physicists doing experiments and also physicists, uh, say theoretical physicists, and so for this 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 motion of oceans, you see that, of course, the, the main motion of the ocean is just to to move uh, to move rigidly with the Earth. So the rotation is is the somehow the dominant effect, but because of this this. Um, uh, rotation, you, you expect the, the motion, the fluid motion, say the relative motion with respect to the Earth to be very constrained. And so then you can also try to use the, the same ideas of multi-scale expansion and then see that you can uh, derive simplified models, which are really important because, of course, even these fluid models, if you think about the ocean, uh, so for instance, Navier-Stokes equation are not really relevant. You have far too many details, far too many things to simulate. And so it's really important, even in, for practical purposes, to, to get this simplified model. But you see that the, the, from the mathematical point of view, you see that it's essentially the same, the same process. You are interested in just removing s small scales or small details and just in the end being able to, to, to describe in a qualitative way uh, what you can observe. And so I think you see that there are somehow two very different problems because one is, is about, you know, statistical physics, very fundamental statistical physics, kinetic theory and so on. The other one is about fluid mechanics and geophysics. So apparently, uh, they share very few similarities. But say at the mathematical level, actually, you can see that there are some properties, some features that are, are somehow a bit similar in the way you can approach uh, the, this kind of questions at the mathematical level. Okay. Well, speaking about the, the sixth uh, problem of Hilbert that you were mentioning in your first uh, problem, uh, well, actually, um, you introduced uh, to me uh, this problem while I was doing my PhD with you and uh, Florent Bertelin, and it, it really influenced the way I do mathematics. And uh, it's actually what makes me fall for kinetic theory and um, and it, it keeps shaping the questions I, I'm asking uh, and I'm interested in because, as you as you just say, it's relevant. This kind of questions are relevant even for completely different context. Uh, for instance, recently I've been asking this kind of question in the context of uh, opinion uh, dynamics models, dynamic opinion models. Sorry, uh, which is uh, far from uh, the gas yes. dynamics uh, that I've started <laughs> with. So th I think this is something very powerful. Uh, um, and um, anyway, what I meant is that. Uh, this is this was the result that it it really was at the beginning of my journey as a mathematician. So, do you have an, an equivalent uh, a result that striked you and uh, that made you the researcher you are? So, from this point of view, my my mathematical journey seems to be much more static than yours, <laughs> because actually I started from the sixth problem of Hilbert and now I'm back to the sixth problem of Hilbert. <laughs> And, uh, okay, we have, say, some, some, of course, some progresses, but, but still, uh, there, are, this is a very, uh, uh, still a very open problem. Um, what I would like to say is that even though this seems like a static journey, I think that, that there have been a lot of kind of small excursion. And maybe that's the, that's, uh, the occasion to, to come back on this, this point that, 
with one mathematical tool, somehow you can you can study or you can uh, adapt to a very different situation. So at some point during my PhD uh, thesis, I, I was interested in, in plasmas and tokamaks. So this seems to be very different from oceans. But you see that in plasmas, the, uh, if you have a, a magnetic field and you have a very fast rotation, and this fast rotation finally, the effect of the fast rotation is not so different from the fast rotation of the fluid in the ocean due to the rotation of the Earth. So, what I like very much with this, with this, say, during a long time, actually, I, I, I was hesitating between mathematics and physics because somehow, I like very much physics because also because it provides a lot of intuition. So you can somehow compare the representation that you have in your mind and, and just, uh, the realm of the observation and so on. So, and I think it's, it's kind of, um, say somehow the observation guides, uh, 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 your intuition and, and somehow then when you prove something, you can, you can compare with. So, I like very much physics for this, but in, on the other end, I'm, somehow I'm, I'm more comfortable with mathematics because I think that uh, the missile of mathematics are really, uh, um, first of all, rigorous. So th there is this set, this framework, which, which is really helpful actually, which helps you. But, but, uh, uh, the other thing with mathematics is that you have this, this abstract, uh, this, abstract concepts, abstract um, uh, translation of, 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 of this, this uh, mechanism. And that's really powerful, as you said, because, because then you can use the same tools, the same kind of mathematics to, 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 to study very different systems. So just give you uh, one example, say micro-local analysis or uh, semi-classical analysis were are very technical things that I will not explain right now, but, but they, they were developed in the context of quantum mechanics. So just to understand, uh, you know, the behavior of one or two atoms and, and this, this so very, very, uh, uh, microscopic level. But then you see that actually it's a very powerful tool just to uh, separate, uh, the different scales, uh, as I mentioned. And then we were able to use the same, exactly the same mathematical setting just to uh, look at uh, this, this big vortices in the ocean, which are uh, due to temperature. So vort a vortex like this is something like, say, the, the typical extent is about, say, 100 kilometers. So you see that there is nothing to do with the atom. Okay, so it's not the same scale at all. This is not the same context at all. But still, you see that you are able to, to, to use the, um, somehow to adapt uh, there's this abstract representation of this, this, uh, physical system. And then, and then you have this, you have this surprising connection between two different fields. And this, I like very much, actually. This, actually being surprised is part of, uh, research as well. Yeah, yeah. So, um, so we, we are saying that, uh, okay, uh, so mathematics, uh, you can do math for math and you can also use them for, uh, concrete problems attached to physics or other things. Um, but actually there is also beauty in mathematics. Um, and uh, actually, I, I often hear you talk about it. Um, could you tell us what is for you uh, an elegant demonstration? So I totally agree that that this this aesthetics is part of mathematics. As, as I told you in the introduction, I think that mathematics is kind of art. So of course, but then you, you see that aesthetics is a very subjective notion. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it's difficult to, it's difficult to, um, to characterize. So what I find elegant is maybe not what you will find elegant. So what I can tell you is what I find uh, yeah. elegant somehow. Um, and for sure, I, I like things which are simple. So that, may <laughs> seem a bit uh, a bit strange for a definition but um so this means that that i'm not fond of all this you know and i think it's very, something which now uh happens very often that that you have very technical papers you know 
hundred of pages of computation, construction, definitions, and then, okay, you can read them, check that you can go from one line to the other line, but somehow what, what is missing, and for me it's something which is really important, is to, say, catch the, the whole thing uh, mm -hmm. with a, a single picture, or maybe two or three, but, but say, to have this, this representation in your mind of what you are doing. Mm. And so for me, that's, that's what I call simplicity. So, so somehow what I call simple is something that, okay, maybe I will not, I will not, of course, check all the details with this, 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 uh, this big picture, but it's something where I can find a big picture, a kind of representation in, in, in my mind where I see how all the things are connected together and I understand the mechanism Mm -hmm. Somehow, and as so, for me, uh, being able to identify a single or three or two or um, a finite number of mechanisms, and and I think it's part of the elegance of the proof. Mm -hmm. So somehow, it's kind of being able to 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 extract a kind of structure, uh, and this for me is really what makes mathematics elegant. Uh, say all this technical things are mm. just okay. Of course, they are necessary because in the end, you need to, to check that everything is rigorous and so on. But, but, but uh, for me, it's really important that, that somehow you, you can have this big picture in your mind. And this, this is part of what I call elegant. And so when I, I, I listen to a lecture, say I will be happy in the end of the lecture if, if I can have this, this big picture. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And of course, I can understand that that you have to check a lot of lemmas and technical things to 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 see that that this this uh, big picture is is really uh, working in your uh, your case. But 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 somehow, if at the end of the lectures, I just understood a couple of technical arguments, then I'm not really happy because it's not it's not really mathematics. It's just like competition. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah, and maybe it resonates with what we were saying before. Uh, if um, you draw the big picture for the audience, it's easier to extract uh, what you could use for your problem, which happened to be different, which is more difficult if it's lost in a lot of technicality. So, so I understand. Uh, I think I understand what you mean. Okay, thanks. Um, so. Um, one of the things uh, uh, that I enjoy about this job um, that I was not necessarily aware of uh, when I started is that it's really not uh, lonely, uh, if you choose. It's not a, a lonely job. Uh, it's, it's a lot of uh, collaboration and work uh, in group. And um, actually, since you can choose who you work with, <laughs> you, you can work with the people you appreciate. And uh, this is really one of the, the aspects that makes uh, this job uh, enjoyable for me. And for you, what makes it enjoyable? I think that uh, I join you on this, 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 uh, <laughs> this um, characterization that, that uh, I think just doing things with others First of all, because I, I, I like very much, you know, talking with people and, 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 and just, uh, I think it's uh, also a very uh, friendly, uh, um, way of working, which, which is very nice because actually this is part of the life, but it's not no, oh, my whole life. So I'm happy that, that I can somehow also have this, uh, friendly relation with, with people, um, I'm working with, but, but, um, also, as I maybe mentioned a bit earlier, um, there is this, this kind of very, uh, it's a very, um, fascinating adventure for me to, uh, and I, for this, I like really, uh, working with the same people during very long periods because somehow you, you, you learn. Of course, you are not in the mind of other people, but somehow you, um, you learn really from, from their approach, from their uh, representation, from, you know, once again, uh, mathematics is, has this, this very uh, particular um, feature that it's, say, it's about abstract concept. And so abstract concept, you can have a lot of representation. There is not just one which is relevant. Mm -hmm. There are really many. And, and actually, 
the more representation you have, the, the, the more you understand somehow the, the abstract object and its main features. It's, it's, uh, and, and so I like it very much to, to, to be able to confront my own point of view with, with the point of view of other people. So I think it's really, uh, and, and, and working, you know, on, on very long times with the same mm. people, I think it's, it's really, uh, uh, something f which for me is really a, a great experience, yeah. both from the human point of view and from, from this, this, uh, intellectual point of view. In the end, you obtain things that you, you would never have, uh, imagined before. Yeah. And that's, that's really surprise. Actually, I think it's uh, also a very, uh, a very, uh, nice, um, uh, particularity of our job. Probably in some jobs, surprise is not, uh, very good things, but for us, I think it's, um, uh, probably the main discoveries are just surprises. <laughs> yeah. I, I, there is this quotation that you, you gave on your speech for the French Academy that I really like and I think uh, sum up a, a bit what you say is that um, alone you go faster and together you go further. So you really uh, benefit from the vision of others and, uh, and you, can, uh, you can reach points you will never have uh, alone. So. One of the things also you were saying, I think, uh, that you enjoy is the fact that you can choose the people you work with, but also the subject, the, the, the time when you, you work, uh, the freedom, uh, I think is one of the points you, you, you yes, enjoy. Yes, I think that there is no, not so many jobs where you can choose everything. <laughs> okay. So maybe, maybe, um, I, I don't know whether there, there will be uh, young people uh, looking at this video, but we should say also that, uh, this job is uh, sometimes uh, difficult, uh, especially, uh, from the psychological point of view, because say sometimes, and it's a good surprise to find, uh, incredible things, but most of the time you don't find anything and, uh, or you, you write things which are completely wrong. So I think it's also part of, uh, of the, uh, say it's somehow the, the price to pay for this freedom. But uh, this creativity, uh, requires a lot of time and of freedom. So if, if you have very uh, strong constraint to, to publish papers in, uh, within a short time or, or to, uh, you know, to, to have a lot of connection with different peoples, then uh, you are, say, your mind is not really um, uh, free for uh, for trying strange things. I, I think research is also about looking at things which maybe seem a bit crazy at the beginning. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I think I think freedom is really important and it should be uh, respected, which is very difficult because it's not really compatible with a lot of you know political constraints and all this kind of thing. We should be careful that, uh, especially young people can be, um, can be free for, um, for doing high quality research. All right. <clears throat> well, uh, thank you very much for sharing uh, your uh, interesting vision and, uh, and your passion uh, that we can uh, feel. I was very happy to spend this nice moment with you. And, um, is there anything you would add to, to conclude? Thank you too. <laughs> <laughs>